you're all these things, all these different elements crush together to become this like beautiful multifaceted gem. <laughs> Hi, thank you so much for being here. I am Meryl, welcome to Meryl's Mystic, and I empower witches, bitches, and dudes to complete themselves because you are the one that you've been looking for. And today we are here to talk about or connect with the upcoming Leo full moon. And I'm gonna look at my notes here because I have ADD and can't remember everything. Okay, so before I get started, I did want to let you know that um, I'm going to be trying to take a social media break-ish uh, during Pisces season, right before spring. So I won't be online as much for a couple weeks, um, so probably no lives, but I will be available for personal one-on-one -on -one readings. And so I'm offering you a 22% off all of my one-on-one -on -one sessions until March 20th, until the first day of spring. And that coupon code is WINTER, all caps, 22, the number 2, 2. So WINTER22, when you book with me, um, and you should be able to find my booking link attached to any of my profiles. I hope to see you on a call. Okay, so the Leo full moon. <laughs> so the Leo full moon, the full moon um, during Aquarius season is always in Leo because Leo is Aquarius' sibling sign or Aquarius and Leo are sibling signs. They are opposite on the astrology wheel. And the Leo full moon is always great during Aquarius season. It's always great in general because it gives us a big burst of confidence and strength and energy. Um, to start carrying us uh, through the end of winter towards spring. What else? Um, <laughs> it will be happening at uh, approximately 8.59 a.m. Pacific time. So it's 9.59, 10.59, 11.59 Eastern. And so just before 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m. and noon Eastern time. And that will actually be happening just two days, just 60 hours, or just about 60 hours before Pisces season starts. So what does our Leo full moon give us during Aquarius season? Well, Aquarius season is here always to help us embody and embrace our weirdness, our the unconventional parts of us, things that we didn't think fit for us and we wanted to try out. Aquarius season is a great time for that. And I love that this Leo full moon is coming at the end because it's really going to help you proudly embody all those things that you've been trying and working on, all those things that you liked that you were maybe unexpecting to like or unconventional ways. You learned how to do unconventional ways of doing things for yourself that work for you and may not work for anybody else. And nobody understands why it works for you, but it works for you. And so Leo full moon the Leo energy is here to really help you be proud of learning more about yourself and being proud of exactly who you are. That is the big thing that Aquarius and Leo have in common. And when I was writing um, notes today about it to make sure I covered things, uh, did I cover everything? Burst of energy, powerful, strong, ooh, and fierce. Remember Leo's energy is always fierce. Um, yep, yep, yep. Oh, it made me think of when you see parents letting their kids wear their costumes um, any time of the year because that's what they wanted to wear out of the house today. So it's a great time to just like wear whatever you want. <laughs> Aquarius season is already kind of good for that. If you have a chance, go watch the Aquarius general energy reading on my YouTube channel and I wore pajamas for that because I got these new, so comfortable, cute PJs and I said, fuck it, it's Aquarius season. This is what I'm wearing. And I did it again today because I need to do laundry, but then I realized that my Prince shirt and my Prince leggings, I don't know if you, you can't see his face that way. Let me show you. Prince leggings, Prince face. <laughs> were happened to be clean and I was like, Prince outfit today, 
that's what I want to wear, and that's what I'm going to wear. Okay, so even little practices like that, little ways of embracing um, things that, you know, trigger that little voice inside of your head that's like, they're all going to laugh at you, you know, don't. Those are old paradigms and tropes that we are learning now. We're not correctly integrated into us as children, and so these are great times to embrace those things that maybe society your parents your friends however whatever influenced you growing up made you think that it wasn't okay to do it that way or be that way it is it's okay to do it your way it's okay to be who you are cool okay so i think that's everything um Mercury retrograde is officially out of the post shadow after the 24th. So you may be experiencing um, that post shadow still. I know I've definitely been noticing it. It was a real strong Mercury retrograde and it continues to um, make its presence known in certain ways. So just keep breathing, be patient, trust that everything's working out the way that it is supposed to be um, and it will. Sometimes it doesn't feel that easy, but then sometimes things happen in life and you're like, there it is. It did work out because I said it was going to. <laughs> the universe proved that to me recently and I really needed that that little boost. So I hope that, that even the Leo full moon may bring you that boost of confidence, of, of reassurance that it is worth it and to keep going. And let's talk about how um, this full moon is going to uh, affect us collectively. Now these are general energies, so they may all the messages may not land for you. That's okay. You just take the ones that do and leave the other ones for someone else. Okay, I'm hearing cut the deck. This has been happening a lot more in my readings lately, which I've noticed is that I'm getting cues from my intuition, from my guides about how the cards need to come out because they all it's always a little different and I love that I like things switched up okay three of cups in reverse three of cups in reverse for the general energy that this full moon is bringing it could be a gift it could be a lesson it could be a challenge so let's connect to that so the Three of Cups, I do love this Three of Cups. We're using the Modern Witch Tarot deck today by Lisa Sterl. It's becoming a very popular deck. It's awesome. Um, so the Three of Cups is like the festival car. Like these ladies are clearly partying it up at a festival. So sorry, I'm trying to get both cameras for Facebook and Instagram and we're still playing around with angles. Okay, so... So the Three of Cups is all about celebration, coming together, um, and it's funny because like we're coming out of the pandemic, and or we're trying to, and it just keeps on going. Um, that there is such like we are getting more and more of this urge to be out, you know. It's we thought i feel like we thought that when it first started that we were like really jones to get out and now even those of us who like weren't jones to get out are accepting you know or wanting to accept more invitations or are thinking about getting out there i feel like this is like this underlying feeling of wanting to get out there but it's just like not quite time yet um especially in the northern hemisphere we're still in winter so it's like reminding you that like spring is just around the corner and those those needs of yours to connect with those that um, bring you the most joy, could do those activities that light you up, like they're they're on their way. I feel like they're they're kind of just around the corner and it's and it's probably good that <laughs> like they're at a festival, they're outside. Like we're, we're just kind of coming out of what we've been experiencing. And so that's what spring and summer is so great about anyway, is because we can all be outside. 
Um, and because a, a lot of people are still feeling uncomfortable inside in large places. And it's hard to navigate right now what to do and what not to do because everywhere is a little different. So we're really having to trust our gut, but then also be open to how things are going to work out. And that's like just overall with life in general. Um, it's just kind of, it's like, just wait, just wait a little bit. Um, because like I said, this, the Leo full moon energy is kind of like, is kind of just about you and just about how you feel. Aquarius energy it is more self, <laughs> I wanted to say self-centered, but I'm not, that's like, it's like not in one word. Like you, you need, you needed to center yourself in your life. You're not self-centered. You're centering yourself in your life. Um, and, and prioritizing like your needs and what, what you need to feel good and healthy and balanced. So it's like, they're really wanting you to be at your best self before you start like jumping out and reintroducing yourself to the world or events or or what what have you because a lot of us have changed a lot in these last few years and i know a lot of people were experiencing huge transition before all of this was happening also and so there's been a lot of this inner in and out energy of making sure that you are solid in your new foundation of who you really truly have become before you reintroduce that person like out into the world because there may be certain situations places people that you used to be able to be around before that you cannot be around or have part of your energy now um i'm also being called to talk about the two of cups a little bit uh because it is the three of cups in reverse there um I feel like too, as, as tempting as it can be to seek out like large group situations, it does feel like the next step um, from, from self-centering, centering yourself, <laughs> uh, is making sure you are being purposeful with who's around you and making sure that you, that it's quality, not quality quantity of the of the people you should be surrounding yourself with now and in the future um and there's been a lot of trial and error going on with that in the last year or so 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 be gentle with the process be gentle with yourself be gentle with other people um and uh yeah i feel like it's still feeling like there's like it's good stuff along along the way. It's I love I like that this three of cups came up in a more positive place because so many times it can come up in like a very self destructive place and I just didn't feel that energy at all. It's very much this like excited energy and it's like whoa 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 we gotta make sure we gotta make sure we're ready first okay. So the second card is is the um how how uh I wanted to say purpose. Yeah, purpose, the purpose of this, Ace of Cups in reverse. So the purpose of this is so that when you, that we're working so hard on filling your cup that when you go out, you're not just all of a sudden draining your cup without even realizing it. If you wait until you're ready to come out, of, to, to be out and about, which is really funny that we, you know, we've been talking, the Three of Cups really encapsulated the Ace, Two, and Three into the energy today. And the Ace of Cups is coming back up to show, like, it, again, you're not ready to go to this place of really putting yourself out there. You can't, it's, you can put yourself out there. It's just about being more purposeful about it and making sure, really asking yourself, really inquiring with your intuition about whether you really want to do these things or not is this truly gonna be fulfilling to you 
is this really going to light you up or are you, is it going to leave you exhausted and drained? And sometimes it can feel like it could be both and we need to, you know, go try it out anyway to find out the answer. It's okay if you still need to go try it out and be like, okay, that proved me that I don't need to do that again. Or you'll, or you'll be pleasantly, pleasantly surprised and be like, oh, awesome. This person and I are still on the same page and this is definitely somebody that I can um, keep in my inner circle, okay? Okay, so this is gonna be the how. Ooh, temperance. So, you know, the overall energy kind of talked about the how, um, but the core of this is balance. Um, and temperance is also Sagittarius energy and Sagittarius like Leo and um, Aquarius is very unapologetic in their own ways. And I love that this is, it's just more validation for the messages that were coming up previously. And also the thing about Sagittarius, which I um, ties into this Aquarius season, is that embodiment and alchemization of these parts of you that might feel weird or unconventional or you know you're worried about showing temperance is all about the alchemy of two opposite energies or two things that don't seem like they go together and figuring out how to make that go together and that's really what this energy of aquarius season and this leo full moon together have been bringing you is this alchemization of different parts within you that you don't feel like should exist in the same way, but really do, okay? Like we're breaking down these, these lines, these barriers, these tropes, these paradigms that, and these, these boxes, we don't have to fit into these boxes anymore. And the, your, the universe, your guides are all trying to help you see that they're, you're not a box. You're not a circle. <laughs> you are an ethereal, spiritual, divine being that is so multifaceted. Like you are, if you were anything, you're a diamond. Like you're all these things, all these different elements crushed together to become this like beautiful multifaceted gem. I love that that analogy just came in. Thank you, y'all. Good job. So, and it, there's still cups in the temperance card too. It's a fire energy. There's still cups. Um, fire, we have fire, the air of Aquarius season. Um, and the cool thing too that I always say about temperance whenever it comes up is that um, I got to see a very old temperance card recently and there were not two cups in, in most temperance cards now you see two cups of water and this temperance cup which i think expresses the energy even more better is a cup of fire and a cup of water and how do we get these two things to work together because there's lots of times when fire and water together can be very beneficial okay there's there's all these different layers and elements and and yes, there's opposition in certain places and challenge, but there are so many ways that if we were really paying attention, that we would see that these things, when they work together, it can create beautiful art in so many different facets and ways in life. Okay. Okay. Let's just look at the bottom of the deck really quick. Four of Wands. Stay home. <laughs> There's, and this is also about establishing a grounding, like I said in the first place, like establishing this foundation, this need for, there, a need for emotional and spiritual grounding in order to be able to hold yourself high and be in your energy and not let other people affect you or drain you when you're out, out in the world. That's not to say that you should just learn to be tolerant of everything. You're not supposed to be upset. Like we are supposed to be being aware of what's happening in our world also. But this is to help you be at your best self so that you can continue 
to contribute to your ripple effect in the world also. Okay. Let's do an energy oracle card by Sandra Ann Taylor. The Thinking Woman, number 47, The Thinking Woman, and she is in reverse. She came up in reverse, so we'll read the reversal message. I think The Thinking Woman's come up before. These are pretty new cards, um, so I haven't had a chance to see all of them. The Thinking Woman, female of wisdom or understanding. And that just means, you know, a more feminine energy. Reversed. This card reversed could represent a difficult time for your own personal growth. Interesting. You may be feeling confused about your personal purpose or disconnected from your heart's true path. Look within and open up to your own inner guidance. Trust your intuition about what you need to learn in order to move on. The thinking woman reversed could also indicate a woman who is misleading you or giving you misinformation or of some sort. Be aware and set boundaries. This is just about people in general are showing you if they are going to fit into your energy or not. Be aware and set boundaries. Remember, your own spirit is always your best guide. And when you set those boundaries, how those people react will show you who they really are. Um, the affirmation is, I open my mind and heart to my own inner wisdom. I am thoughtful, focused, and clear. So that's how you need to feel in order to be able to go and be social again with people. <laughs> We are kind of, you know, we've had to be so isolated from each other through all of this. There is a level of it of us relearning how to go socialize because I know for myself, my partner, um, some other friends of mine, there's a whole lot of people that we used to socialize with that we do not socialize with now. And, and that, there's navigation in that, in, in finding, you know, and still being able to be in old spaces that you used to be in and also finding new spaces to be in. And, and like I said in the beginning, it, there is so much of this that is about trusting your intuition. I do feel like it's more the first thing than the last thing. I think it's just people are showing you um, who they are. Uh, trust your intuition. Yep. Um, it's, it, it it's, if you are confused about your path right now, stop trying so hard. <laughs> and if you are, if that is getting to you, like you're confused, you're disconnected, you don't know what to do, um, it, that is a great time to book a one-on-one -on -one session with me. Um, but other than that, like you are right where you're supposed to be. You're doing the thing. You're doing the work, even if you don't feel like it. And the 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 celebration part of of us being on the other side of this is like does feel like it's right around the corner or at least in little ways for everybody individually we're going to be able to find new things to do new ways to connect okay cool thank you that is the general collective reading for the leo full moon coming up on the 16th and let me know what um, is resonating with you. Let me know if you have any questions. I did not get Aquarius season tarot scopes out. Unfortunately, there was a death in my family. My grandmother passed away. Um, I'm very close with my family. So that was a thing. Like my mom and I spent the night with her at one point at, at the end of her journey. Um, we were all there all the time. Um, so that took up a lot of time and energy and then my I had a autoimmune burnout and I could not do anything for days so I'm so sorry that Aquarius season did not get tarot scopes 
I will have the one line like lessons out uh, before the end of Aquarius season. So you at least get a little, little something. And then the Pisces season uh, tarot scopes will be out, should be at the beginning of Pisces season next week. So thank you so much for your support. Thank you again for being here um, and continuing to support me and what I've been trying to build all this time. And I will see you all soon. Should wave by. <laughs> I will see you soon. Bye y'all.